Welcome to this video from revisionworld.com for Revision World TV, looking at studying poetry. In this video, I will talk about the language, form and structure of poems, which is essential for you to understand in order to pick up the top grades in your exams. Language used in poetry. Think about what word choices the poet makes. Do they use figurative language, such as alliteration, repeating the same sound at the start of a series of words? For example, in Gerald Manley Hopkins' poem, The Wind Hover, he describes a kestrel hovering. I caught this morning's minion, kingdom of daylight's dolphin dapple down drawn falcon. Metaphors, a comparison that is impossible, but is written as if true. William Wordsworth, in his poem Upon Westminster Bridge, describes London as a heart. And all that mighty heart is lying still. Simile, a comparison that uses as or like. For example, in Mary Ann Evans' In a London Drawing Room. Cutting the sky with one long line of wall like a solid fog. Personification, writing about an object as if it has human qualities or feelings. For example, in the poem The Wind by James Stevens, the poet personifies the wind. The wind stood up and gave a shout. Onomatopoeia. Words that sound like the words they refer to, such as boom or crash. Wilfred Owen uses onomatopoeia to create a sense of the sound of gunfire in Anthem for Doom's Youth. Only the stuttering rifle's rapid rattle. Assonance. Repeating vowel sounds within a series of words. For example, Sylvia Plath uses it in the opening line of her poem, Frog Autumn. Summer grows old, cold, blooded mother. Contrast, using two opposite ideas or images. In Sonnet 130, William Shakespeare uses, My mistress' eyes are nothing like the sun. Coral is far more red than her lips red. Symbolism, an image that represents another meaning for example, blue representing depression or sadness. In A Light Exists in Spring by Emily Dickinson, the poet uses light to represent happiness and hope. A light exists in spring, not present on the year. Once you have identified the type of figurative language used, you will need to explain why the poet uses this language in the poem and how it makes the reader feel. Let's move on to the form of the poem. Form is when a poem follows a pattern or topic and the type of poem. To pick up the top grades, it's essential to know and understand the forms of a poem. Types of poem include a sonnet, which are traditionally a love poem. The most famous are probably Shakespeare's sonnets. Sonnets are usually written in iambic pentameters and contain 14 lines. Dramatic monologues are poems where the speaker or narrator speaks to someone. The listener always remain silent. The poet doesn't write from their own perspective, they take on a character. An example of a dramatic monologue would include the poem Havisham by Caroline Duffy. Lyric. Lyrics are emotional poems that express the thoughts and feelings of the poet. The poet expresses their emotions rather than telling a story. Byron's When We Two Parted is an example of a lyric poem. Ballad. Ballads are poems that were written to be sung that tell a story. They contain short stanzas and usually have a chorus. Tennyson's Charge of the Light Brigade is an example of a ballad poem. Epic. An epic poem has a long narrative about a significant event, usually with a serious tone. Homer's The Odyssey is an example of an epic poem. In your exams, you will need to identify the forms of poetry and explain why they're important. Once you understand the form of poem, it helps you understand the structure. Structure is how the poem is organised. Are the stanzas written in couplet, tercet or quatrains? You also need to identify the structural devices and explain why they're important. This will help you answer any questions about the structure of a poem. You should think about how the poem appears on the page links to its meaning and effects. Also, think about the overall shape of the poem, the number of stanzas, length of stanzas, length of lines, and the movement between the lines and the stanzas. Rhyme can make an important contribution to the overall impact of a poem. Rhyme is quite easy to spot, but it's rather more difficult to explain what effects it has on the poem, 
so it was important that you look out for the sound effects created. Does it have a musical quality or a jarring effect? What emphasis does the rhyme place on certain words, giving them a prominence? Does it draw lines and stanzas together, linking ideas and images, or create a pattern? Another kind of pattern in poetry can be created through the rhythm, which consists of patterns of recurring stresses and pauses. The rhythm in a poem is more difficult to identify than the rhyme, so it's often useful to read the poem aloud in order to get the feel of the rhythm pattern of the poem. If you want to find more information about studying poetry, then check out Revision World. I've put a link in the description of this video of our poetry section, where you'll find lots of information about different poems and poets. Thanks for watching. Give us a like and subscribe to Revision World TV. And don't forget to check out some of our other videos. Goodbye.